let's kick this uh, Laravel 6 tutorial series off by quickly going through the installation process. So we'll go to laravel.com, click documentation. Under the installation instructions, it's going to tell you that you're going to need PHP greater than or equal to 7.2. To install the Laravel installer, you're going to need to run the following command using Composer. To get Composer, go to getcomposer.org forward slash download. Uh, Windows, you're just going to click on this Composer setup.exe. For Linux and Mac, you can follow the instructions uh, that are a little bit on this screen, or you can just Google it to uh, see how to install it on there. Another thing that you're also going to need is the NPM Package Manager if you ever want to do any kind of front-end development with React or Vue, which most likely we're going to get into that a little bit later on. But uh, it's recommended that if you don't have Node, just go ahead and install it. Just go to nodejs.org, click on the latest release, and download it and run it. Once you have everything installed, the Composer and Node, like I said, run the following command and you should have everything uh, up and running that you're going to need in order to you know, create a new Laravel project. So you can type in composer-v to check uh, your latest version of Composer. Uh, you can also do node-v and you can do, once you install Laravel globally, uh, laravel-v. <coughs> this will just tell you that you have you know, what version of Node, Laravel, and Composer. Uh, once you install Laravel globally, you'll be able to run the Laravel new project command, which if we look at the documentation, there it is right there. It just says in order to install or create a new project, you're going to you know, run this command, Laravel new block. This will download all the dependencies and project structure and everything and package it up into a folder. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. It's not a requirement. You can also run and create this project with the composer command. So you can type in composer, create project, dash dash prefer this, Laravel, Laravel, and then the name of your project. And it will do the same thing as Laravel new blog. But since we're going to be working on Laravel, just go ahead and install the global version of it, uh, of the installer, so that, I mean, there's no surprises later on down the road. So <clears throat> I've already seeded into the folder that I want to be doing this from. So I'll just type in Laravel new, and we'll call this YT series. And this will take some time because it will be fetching everything, installing all the dependencies. So as soon as it's done, I mean, it should take anywhere between 30 seconds to a couple of minutes. Uh, we'll come back and continue. While this is installing, I want to direct you to my uh, medium.com article page. So you can just go to medium.com forward slash at Dino Kajic. And if you scroll down, you can see this Laravel 6.x with React and React Router installation to deployment. So this does cover how to install React and React Router on top of Laravel 6.x, uh, but it will show you instructions right here on how to set up Laravel in case you miss some stuff. So uh, this is also a good resource if you want to get up and go on with Laravel and React. So I pretty much included everything that you would need to do. And I have a lot more detailed video actually at the bottom of the page that just lists everything and guides you through installation of Laravel and React. Eventually we will be doing a series on Laravel and React, but for the time being, this is just a Laravel course. So you're really just going to be focusing on this top section which says setting up Laravel. Now that it's done, we can go back to Laravel's uh, documentation, and it says in order to test this installation, we can go ahead and type in a PHP artisan serve. So artisan is just a command line interface that is included with Laravel and uh, provides a developer with a bunch of useful commands, such as uh, automatically creating controllers, models, migration files, etc., as well as running the application using the PHP development server, which we're about to do right now. So we'll just type in PHP artisan sir. Uh, well, we actually have to CD into the directory that we just created. So we'll go ahead and CD into YT series. And if we list the files, uh, the artisan file is right there. So that's why we cannot run uh, artisan PHP artisan serve outside of this directory. So we need it to come inside this directory so that we can actually uh, run this file. So php artisan serve and it's gonna go ahead 
can start a development server just like that. So we can open that up and there we have it. Larva has been installed successfully on our system. So all we have to do now is open it up in our code editor. So we'll just go to open folder. Uh, where did I save all this? YouTube, Laravel, YT series, and we'll select this folder. I'm not going to overload you guys with a bunch of unnecessary information. There is a lot of different uh, stuff that we can explore, but we'll just start with the necessities. So this is an MVC uh, type of framework, model view controller, where we're going to have models, views, and controllers stored in separate portions of the file. So if we expand the app directory inside HTTP, there is a controllers folder and that's where your controllers will be uh, placed. So we're not going to start off with creating controllers right off the bat, but just know that that's where controllers live. Now inside app directory, just the app directory, that's where your models will live. So you can create subdirectories underneath here call for, for example models and have them loaded in here but for the time being uh, we're going to place basically all of our models just under our app directory we're going to skip this this uh, we are going to expand the database uh, sub or directory and we are going to be working with some migration files and this is where all your migrations are going to go and that's just basically a fancy way to create database tables. Uh, we're going to close this out. Your public directory is pretty much not going to be accessed by us. So this is where your index.php, you know, your main access to the uh, whole Laravel project is going to be. But like I said, we're not going to be doing anything in there. We are going to be doing some stuff under resources, and that's primarily under the views. So this is uh, the last portion of the MVC, uh, we've seen that under app, uh, HTTP is where your controllers lived. Under just the app directory is where your models live. And under resources views is where your views live. So they have a special Blade templating engine. So welcome.blade.php is used. And all that allows is to use these um, curly braces and, of course, a few other things. But uh, in essence, it allows you to simplify and not use PHP directly within your HTML code, right? So as you can see right here, we have an if statement. It's surrounded by this at, if, etc., and and if uh, stuff that doesn't exist in PHP, but it does exist in this blade uh, templating uh, class. So we're going to go ahead and close out views. Later on, once we start doing React and maybe View um, on the resources JS, this is where your React components will live. The last, well, actually a couple more um, folders that we still have to look through. Routes, this, uh, in Laravel, you're pretty much going to have to create a route for everything. So if somebody goes to your website directly, so let's open that up. So we're going to 127001 forward slash 8000. And we're going to basically the, the root, the main portion of the site. We could go back here and we can see that a route has been defined for that. So when they come to the main page, we're going to be calling this function that's just going to return a view. And this is one way of doing a route. Other ways are going to be creating controllers in here and then calling the view from the controller but this is just a very simplified way so right here we have this route um, that is going to be either accepting one kind of http request right so in this case it's going to be uh, accepting a get request so if we wanted to do another route so let's say get and we wanted to for example do about we can do something like that and we can pass a function and we can just go ahead and we don't have to return a view we can return for example h1 slash h1 
about page. Let's go ahead and save it. If we go back here and we type in forward slash about. There we go. Now we have our about page. Uh, of course, you're going to want to create a view or a controller that calls a view for the about page, but that's pretty much, in an essence, what you're going to be doing with these routes. And you'll see there's, of course, a lot more to it, but this is just a simplified version. The other route uh, file that we're going to be looking at is this API. So the API just gets called for API requests. Um, so we can actually do another um, route right here just to show you what it looks like. And let's say, I don't know, uh, product. So we're, we're every time somebody searches for a product or goes to the product API uh, page, we're going to return an array. And within that array, we're going to say uh, ID is equal to one, brand is equal to Sony, I don't know. And model is equal to some Sony model. I'm not 100% sure. So we'll go ahead and surround that. And now, in order to get into this API route instead of the web route, the only difference is you can't just type in product right here because it doesn't know. It's going through the web route right now and it can find product right here but it is inside our api.php and so how do you access that well just by typing in forward slash api forward slash product and you can see right here that it returned an array um, or an object a json object with id1 brand sony and model some sony model or actually i guess i misspelled model mode the last folder that we're going to look at is the storage folder and this is where we're going to be saving all of our images etc uh, etc et within the public directory how are we going to access it we're going to actually create a symbolic link and the symbolic link uh, will be placed inside our public directory so that's it um, as far as the folder structures go we are going to need to modify this .env file. The .env file will contain something like this, for example, where it contains all of our um, connection environmental variables uh, for a database connection, right? So we have our DB host, we have the port, the database, the username, and your database password. You can add other things in here, which we're not going to do for the time being. But you can explore this, and this is where all your environmental variables will go. We're, we're going to try to keep this as simple as possible. We're not going to try to overload you with information. And we'll keep introducing you to more and more information as you need it. Um, we're looking through everything else, I think that's pretty much it. I don't think you need to know anything else. So let's just recap one more time. Inside our app directory, inside HTTP, that's where your controllers live. We're going to be creating all these controllers, models, and views with the artisan command. Inside the app directory, uh, just directly, is where your models are going to live. Inside database, once we create migration files with the artisan commands, this is where your migration files will go to. And it will look something like this. Uh, once we're fin finished with the migration files, we're actually going to migrate them, and they're going to create data uh, database tables. Uh, we're going to close that out. Public, we're not going to worry about. Resources, uh, views, that's where your views are going to live. And under routes, we're going to be looking at web.php. Whenever we create a new page, pretty much, any kind of get request is going to be going here. Uh, form submissions, for example, let's say you have a post request, this will just be replaced by post. Um, and then we have other RESTful API kind of type um, HTTP requests, such as delete, put, etc., etc. API.php, that's pretty much going to be serving for your API calls. Um, we're going to be using this more and more if we ever get into React development, which I'm sure we will eventually. Storage, under app public, that's where we're going to create our images folder and uh, store all of our images pretty much under .env, that's how we're going to be setting up our database connection. So that's it for this tutorial. I know there's a lot of stuff, especially if you're new, 
but I promise this was just an introduction, just to try to get you to you know be set up with having this structure right here. And uh, if you want, for the last maybe three, four minutes, just kind of rewatch it over and over again up until you just get used to uh, seeing the structure and that it doesn't look overwhelming to you. I know the first time I saw it, I thought it looked overwhelming, but now whenever I look at it, I say, oh, this is pretty simple, you know, just under app, HTTP, there's the controllers, that's where I store all my controllers. And once we figure out how do we access those controllers, how does controllers access those views, how does controllers access those models and then return data and pass it to the views, it's going to make a lot more sense and uh, we're going to be doing some fun examples along the way.